A very warm good afternoon to all of you. On behalf of Solo Quarter and First View Group, I, Sakshi, welcome you to our webinar on Solar Market Outlook Uttar Pradesh. Before starting today's pr proceedings, I take this opportunity to thank our platinum partner for this event, Longi and Growart. We will be playing a short video by our sponsor, Growart, now. I request my team to play the factory video. Now I would like uh, Mr. Shantanu Sesat uh, to take on the stage. Uh, Mr. Sesat, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Sakshi. And a warm welcome to all of you. So myself, uh, Shantanu Shirsat. Uh, basically, I'm taking care for the, all the pre-sales activities for Grow Out in the Indian market. And uh, today, I will be giving you a very brief about uh, Grow Out as a company and uh, what are the different products uh, that uh, we are offering for the Indian market uh, in terms of on-grid storage solutions, EV chargers. And uh, towards the end, uh, I will be giving you a brief about uh, different projects that are being commissioned with the help of Growart uh, Inverters. So today's presentation will be consisting of a small uh, company profile. Uh, in the second chapter, we will be going ahead with uh, the product and the solutions that we are offering and at, at the end, some of the global references. So uh, basically, Growart was founded in the year 2011 with an USD capital of uh, $20 million. And uh, Growart is a new energy firm which is dedicated to R&D as well as uh, manufacturing of on-grid inverter, energy storage solutions, EV chargers, as well as smart energy management solutions. Growart inverters are now being shipped to more than 160 countries uh, worldwide. And we are having uh, uh, our presence uh, in more than uh, 34 uh, countries where we are having our own uh, offices and warehouses. So talking about the different milestones that we have achieved uh, in the last uh, 11 uh, years. So founded in the year 2011, in the same year, we came up with our subsidiaries in Australia as well as in uh, Hong Kong. In 2012, we launched our first uh, single phase uh, inverter. And uh, it was also being uh, rated uh, by AA certification by Photon Lab. In 2013, we came up uh, with our additional subsidiaries in uh, USA as well as in uh, UK. In 2015, we started our residential energy storage solutions, and it was the same year in which we launched the single phase and three phase hybrid as well as AC coupled inverters. In 2017, uh, we entered into uh, the global uh, top 10 inverter suppliers, uh, and in 2018, uh, we came up with our uh, off grid and uh, micro grid storage solutions. In 2019, we launched our uh, battery-based uh, on-grid inverters, that is uh, the XH uh, series, mean XH series, uh, which is a battery-ready uh, uh, solution that is uh, uh, available. And uh, in 2020, uh, we launched our uh, uh, Grow Home uh, Smart uh, Management System, which is basically for uh, home automation. And in uh, 2021, we came up with a new manufacturing uh, facility in Huzo, where we have ramped up uh, the production capacity to 
uh, more than 3 million units uh, yearly and this is the same year in which we also became the uh, number one uh, supplier of uh, residential inverters globally so uh, talking about uh, the sustainable growth that uh, growwatt is achieved uh, in the last uh, 5 to 10 years so if you are talking about the uh, uh, compound annual gro uh, uh, growth rate so in the last 5 years uh, for the inverter shipment uh, we have uh, shown a growth of more than 36% and in, if the same is being considered uh, for the storage inverters then it has crossed more than 100% growth in the last uh, year itself and we are expecting the same growth in the coming 4 years so right now uh, 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 globally uh, we are a team of uh, more than uh, 4500 employees and our in inverters are being installed in uh, more than 150 uh, countries and there are more than 1.4 million cloud users of the uh, growwatt shine server we are having a team of more than 500 employees in uh, r&d and in 2021 the total uh, investment uh, that we have done for r&d was 5.6% uh, talking about the global shipment for the distributed uh, segment so basically growwatt is ranking in uh, top 3 spots for most of the countries uh, worldwide so you can see from the screen itself uh, we are ranking number 1 in poland uh, mexico brazil uh, china uh, india vietnam as well as or australian market also if you are talking about uh, the global supply for the residential inverter then the growwatt is having a market share of 13.7% and we are ranking number 1 as per the ihs market report and for the commercial uh, segment growwatt is uh, growwatt uh, is ranking number 4 with a market share of more than 10% uh, uh, for the supply of commercial inverters also if you are talking about the uh, market share for the hybrid inverter segment then growwatt is uh, ranking number 2 with a market share of more than 15% to its mean also in the year 2022 as per the upd research lab uh, we received the top uh, inverter uh, pv brand as well as the top brand pv for the storage for 22 different uh, countries so this was a big achievement uh, for growwatt that in the same year we have received uh, more than 20 such uh, uh, nominations as well as the award uh, so as uh, i have already discussed uh, that uh, in the year 2021 uh, we have spent around 5.6% of our total revenue only for the r&d purpose and uh, in two years cumulative uh, investment was around 55 million dollars Uh, in the last two years itself the total cagr of investment is around 55% also if you are talking about our achievements uh, growwatt is having more than uh, 140 patents uh, to its name out of which more than 100 uh, more than 100 are chinese uh, patents we are having more than 30 international patents and more than 10 uh, software copyrights also uh, this year itself in the solar congress growwatt's uh, 125 kilowatt uh, cndi inverter received the best uh, commercial uh, inverter uh, by pov rhineland uh, also uh, uh, we have set up a joint lab with uh, texas instruments in our hq in shenzhen itself where we are working on different uh, uh, segments for uh energy uh, sustainable applications also in the year uh, 2021 uh, we came up with a new manufacturing facility in hozo uh, where now the annual capacity has been increased to 3 million inverters uh, annually and uh, more than 600000 units of battery packs this is a completely automated uh, production line where we are following the stringent growwatt high quality system Uh, talking about the global presence uh, we are having 34 representative uh, offices and uh, warehouses uh, in the different uh, countries of the world and our product is installed in more than 150 countries worldwide uh, talking about uh, growwatt in india uh, right now we are a team of more than 27 employees uh, in which we are having a, a indian director 
to support him we are having a team of four sales person and two product managers as well as for the after uh, sales support we are having a team of uh, 20 service engineers uh, which are based in different cities of india also we are having two warehouses and service centers uh, based out in ahmedabad as well as in uh, hyderabad where cumulatively we are carrying a stock of more than 10 megawatt of uh, uh, inventory in terms of uh, uh, replacement inverters as well as spare parts so this year growwatt has completed its 10 years uh, uh, in the indian market and uh, uh, more than 3 lakh units we have already uh, supplied for the indian market which uh, accumulates to around 3 gigawatt of supply of inverters ranging from 1 kilowatt onwards up to 253 kilowatt so now coming on to the next segment the pv inverters so basically growwatt inverters are used uh, in the application of residential installation commercial and industrial as well as utility scale so we are having a range of inverters which starts from 1 kilowatt onwards up to 253 kilowatt so if you are talking about the residential pro uh, products it has been bifurcated into single phase and three phase uh in the year 2023 growwatt is coming uh, with uh, micro inverters at uh, uh, also which will range from 600 watt up to uh, 2 kilowatt right now the existing range in single phase we are having is from 1 kilowatt onwards up to 6 kilowatt and three phase it goes from 3 kilowatt onwards up to 15 kilowatt in three phase uh, for the c and i the range starts from 20 kilowatt onwards and goes up to 125 kilowatt and if you are talking about the utility we are having uh, two inverter uh, options one is 250 kilowatt which comes with 12 number of mppts and the second one is 253 kilowatt which comes with 15 number of mppts uh, talking about the uh, energy uh, storage so we are also providing the hybrid inverters as well as uh, off grid inverters so if you are talking about the residential okay. energy storage uh, products so in that uh, we are having uh, ac coupled as well as uh, dc coupled uh, solutions uh, in single phase the range starts from 3 kilowatt onwards up to 6 kilowatt whereas in three phase the range starts from 4 kilowatt onwards up to 10 kilowatt also we are having battery uh, uh, ready inverters uh, which is not yet being uh, uh, available for the indian market but it also comes in uh, main series that is in single phase 2.5 kilowatt up to 6 kilowatt and in three phase 3 kilowatt to 10 kilowatt also we are providing uh, lithium ion uh, battery uh, packs uh, which can go up to 50 kwh of uh, storage uh, for single phase and uh, 25 kwh of storage for three phase also the battery ready uh, ready option uh, which i have uh, already uh, mentioned uh, earlier so this particular inverter is just an like an normal on grid inverter which comes with an additional input for battery so after the uh, installation uh, of your pv plant if you want to go for uh, you say uh, storage solution so instead of going for a completely new inverter for that particular purpose the same inverter uh, can be used for battery storage just you need to co connect the additional uh, batteries to that particular inverter and Uh, can be used as a bss solution and basically all types of batteries uh, can work uh, with our inverter maybe it can be uh, lithium ion batteries as well as uh, for that matter lead acid batteries can also work uh, for micro grid solution right now in single phase we are having uh, 5 kilowatt and 3 kilowatt uh, off grid inverters uh, with a battery backup up to 50 kwh uh in this uh, rei 2022 we have come up uh, with our uh, new uh, off grid plus hybrid inverter which starts from 50 kilowatt onwards up to 100 kilowatt in wit series also we have launched uh, uh, our uh, portable power uh, supply source uh, that is the infinity solution Uh, which comes uh, uh, you can say in 1.3 kilowatt 1.5 kilowatt and the smallest one comes uh, in uh, 660 uh, watt so basically this is a, a battery uh, solution a battery based solution uh, which can be used as an uh, you can say an online ups uh, for home backup 
as well as when you are going for any outdoor uh, sh shooting or for that matter trekking so the same uh, uh, power source or the power station can be utilized uh, in 2021 uh, what also launched uh, its uh, ev chargers in uh, ac as well as in uh, uh, dc uh, for ac chargers we are having in single phase 3 kilowatt and uh, 7 kilowatt whereas in uh, three phase we are having 11 kilowatt as well as 22 kilowatt also uh, we have a, a dc fast charger which comes in uh, 40 kilowatt in single gun as well as dual gun also for the smart energy uh, management uh, solution uh, uh, which is basically an ideal solution uh, to provide a clean energy for household as well as uh, businesses and this particular solution is built upon the artificial intelligence, IoT, as well as the big data that we have accumulated in the last 10 years. So basically, for the monitoring purpose, uh, we are having different solutions, like uh, with the help of Wi-Fi dongle, uh, GPRS, 4G, and LAN. And for multiple inverters, we are also having our data logger by the name of Shine Master. Also, we are having our own server and own applications, which is available on Google as well as on Apple Store. Uh, coming on to the last segment, some of the global references. So basically, this is the uh, case study uh, in which the customer has installed a 5 kilowatt single phase uh, inverter uh, in uh, back in 2010-11. Uh, and he, when he went for the extension of his power plant in 2020, he went on with the new iteration or the new generation of uh, Growatt inverters. And still the inverter which was installed in 2010 is still working without any issues. So this particular uh, instance gives us a, uh, what you can say, a, a good uh, benefit as well as a, a, a good backup that uh, the growth inverters are working without any issues for the last 10 years. Then these are some of the battery storage uh, solution uh, that uh, we are having. Uh, now this is a, a 100 kilowatt uh, site uh, with uh, energy storage solution which we have provided for 15 different uh, air force uh, uh, bases in thailand then uh, cndi project in switzerland maldives vietnam china ukraine uh, a 5.5 megawatt plant in uh, maharashtra itself by kirloskar again a 10 megawatt plant in china this is a 90 megawatt solar farm uh, by EA in Thailand where 20 kilowatt inverters were being used. The same goes for a 100 uh, megawatt uh, uh, hill farm by Foxconn where 40 kilowatt uh, inverters were used. This is a 4 megawatt plant in uh, Hyderabad where 200 numbers of 20 kilowatt were being deployed. This is the first installation of our MAX series for IIT Hyderabad, then Forbes Aurangabad 1 megawatt. This is a 7.5 megawatt with our max 253 kilowatt in Solapur. Again, a 10 megawatt plant in Zahasi by our 1500 volt inverter max 250. Uh, for Sadhguru cement in MP, one megawatt plant. Again, a six megawatt plant in Solapur using 60 kilowatt inverters. So that was a little bit introduction uh, for Growatt. Uh, thank you very much for your valuable time. Uh, back to you, Sakshi. Thank you. Thank you so much for that insightful presentation, Mr. C. Sir. I would now request my team to play another video from our platinum partner, Longi. There used to be greater harmony between humans and nature. Then the Industrial Revolution happened. Since then, machines and technology brought prosperity to humankind. Innovation changed the way people lived, but the environment took a hit with the growing carbon emissions. With the occurrence of climate change, there were major disruptions in our planet. More natural disasters occurred across the world. The Paris Agreement 2015 has set a goal to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels. 
the burning of fossil fuel to power the world's growing population and booming economy has been one of the greatest drivers of climate change. It is believed that replacing fossil fuels by renewables is the best solution to curbing carbon emissions worldwide. Hydro, wind and solar became cleaner options to generate energy to power the world. Scientists predict that by 2050, the world will rely purely on renewables, of which 69% will be generated using solar power. The sun provides immense and infinite resources for mankind. Just one year's energy from the sun exceeds the sum of all other energy reserved on the Earth combined. The sun is a huge energy resource we can harvest as certain as the sunrise. Solar energy will continue to evenly power all corners of the world. Where there is sun shining, there is solar power generation to come. If 1% of the world's desert areas be utilized for solar power stations, the electricity generated can power the entire human society. How incredible this sounds! In its early days, solar power was mainly applied for high-end and high-precision applications like space and aeronautics. With the rapid advances in technology, the levelized cost of energy, or LCOE, from solar power has dramatically gone down by 90% in only about 10 years. Regions with abundant sunshine can now harvest solar energy for just 1.04 US cents per kilowatt hour. With the ever-improving technology, it will get even better. Many would ask, the sun is not up all day. What happens at night? As the solar industry grows, more integrated solutions appear. New approaches can ensure the sustainability of solar power generation. For example, during the daytime with sufficient sunlight, we utilize the solar power stations to generate electricity to satisfy the demands of the metropolis. Then, in cloudy conditions and at night time, we can use a combination of solar and energy storage to generate power continuously. We can build pump storage stations in places with the right terrain profiles. During the day, we use solar energy to pump water from a lower level to a higher level. At night, we release the water to power the pump storage station. Thus, we have continuous power supply day and night. Electric vehicles are becoming more prominent transportation means for many. We also have to realize that these cars are virtually mobile battery options too. During the day, solar power is used to charge electric vehicles for daily use. At night, after serving our transportation needs, these electric vehicles can release the excess energy back to the grid. One billion electric vehicles around the world can store one billion kilowatts of solar-derived power per day, which can fully meet the global demands of electricity at night. In the near future, we can use global energy interconnection to balance the load between supply and demand. Day and night, the global energy interconnection can work continuously and tirelessly to ensure solar power is either generated, stored or delivered in all parts of the world. This is truly beyond imagination. Even better, Solar for Solar, Longi's new business model of producing solar panels on factories run by solar panels plus storage. During the day, solar is used to ensure factory production. At night, the factory can get electricity through a variety of energy storage systems. Solar for Solar is a perfect way to fully leverage the whole industry chain. Carbon emissions are totally zero throughout the entire process. Through the Solar for Solar model, we can develop the solar industry much more significantly and therefore create more green energy. With the accelerated adoption of solar energy, not only can we curb the increase of carbon emissions, but we can also revive our planet. Once large-scale solar panel stations are built, they will not only supply sufficient electricity to cities, the surplus power can be used for seawater desalination. The annual volume of seawater desalination could reach 100 billion tons. After desalination, the seawater can be used to irrigate the desert, develop agriculture and turn the desert into an oasis of farmlands. Once the vegetation has increased, the existing carbon emissions in the atmosphere would be captured, absorbed and cleaned up. A negative carbon emission mode therefore begins. 
The model, which uses solar power to revive the ecology of the Earth, can be widely applied in many parts of the world. As calculated, when 70% of the Earth's deserts turn into oasis, all emissions that have ever been emitted since human civilization can be entirely absorbed. The era of negative emissions could truly arrive. Deglaciation, flood, forest fires will no longer occur. Smog, dust storms will be eradicated for good. Time to go into action. Let's revitalize the Earth with new energy. New energy, new earth. Longi. Thank you for that, team. Now uh, we would like to invite Mr. Rohan Scheller from uh, Longi. Welcome to screen, sir. Hi, uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You... And I hope my presentation is visible to you all. Yeah, it's visible, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. So, very good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Rohan Shelar, and I'm taking care of distribution business for Longi, India, and Sri Lanka. So, first of all, uh, thank you, Sakshi, for playing that video because I think with that video, now uh, everyone who is watching us, they know what is our future future vision. And collectively, we all will definitely try to achieve the carbon neutrality together. So as you can see from my first slide, that is the energy transformation scenario for all. So basically what it means for all, as you have seen it from that video. So we are catering for the residential, industrial, commercial, and the ultra large scale utility projects through the long game. Now this one single page gives you a broader idea how our company has been established across the globe. So we have the operating revenue of close to 12.69 billion US dollar. That is close to exceeding more than 1 lakh crore rupees in the year 2021. And uh, we have spent close to 689 million. That is around 5% or 5.5% of our revenue for the R&D last year. And Longi was the company who falls under the global 2000 companies in the Forbes. And along with that, we also came in the Fortune 500 companies of China. More than 60,000 people are part of Longi family across the globe. So this is a brief history of Longi, how we started. Uh, we started in the year 2000. When uh, we all know that the era was dominated by the polytechnology and we have a visionary founder who sensed that the future can be something different. And we started working on the mono semiconductor technology accumulation. 2005, more or less, we started working on our silicon wafers. Now, today, we stand as world's biggest solar wafer company. 2014 is very much close to me because uh, Longi started its module division in the year 2014. And today, again, we are standing as number one manufacturer of the modules. 2019, when we traveled from 2000 to 2019, we, we observed that we have been spending a lot on R&D. And every day, people are demanding something new, something big. But some standardization has to happen if we want the long-term sustainability. And Longi introduced the wafer standard, that is M6 and M10 wafer. And 2021, considering all the parameters of the supply chain, Apart from the modules and the solar and the wafers, we came up with our hydrogen division as well. And uh, today, I think we are standing at uh, 500 megawatt. And within the next few months, we'll be working with more than 2 gigawatt of the hydrogen alkaline electrolyzer production, which will be the largest across the globe. Now, within all these years, uh, what Longi has been given to industry as a technology leaders. So if you can see in 2015, we come up with the monocrystalline technology and the diamond wire cutting. 2016, the perk was introduced. And because of the perk technology, we all know the very initial first year degradation, which used to exceed more than 3 or 4%, has been reduced to less than 2%. Then we come up with the bifacial perk. And we all know that within the same area, what we have installed the modules, we are able to gather and capture more yield from the particular area from the backside of the module, obviously depending upon the albedo available at that area. In 2018, we come up with the half cut technology and uh, it drastically reduced the current throughout the system and 
it made sure that the issues the basically the hotspot and the other issues which were available in the model could be reduced on a maximum extent then 2019 as i mentioned earlier we started standardizing the wafer sizing because we all know like uh, nowadays i'm hearing about 670 700 800 even 1 kilowatt module will come in future but unless and until the efficiency is increased and the size is retained smaller than 2.6 meter area we don't have any issues but if you want to increase the module dimension and then the power watt peak it's not going to make any sense you are going to jeopardize almost like 70% of your investment that is the solar module of your project with that problem and 2021 we came up with our longi life cycle quality we started maintaining the standard bom which will last for 25 years in mono and 30 years in the bifacial now as i mentioned like longi has always been a company who is uh, corely focused on the r&d and it can see can be seen from the investment what we have done this year was the highest what we have done is worth close to 769 bill, million usd and till now cumulatively we have exceeded 1 billion us dollar mark in our r&d and because of that we have more than 1387 patents registered on longi's name and we are working with various universities and uh, affiliates to come up with new and newer technologies now i'll uh, go forward to give you a detail about the capacities because nowadays we are hearing a lot about so many capacities are getting added, added up like 2 gigawatt 3 gigawatt 5 gigawatt so all these big numbers are coming into the picture so now these are current few capacity which i'd like to share with you our current wafer manufacturing capacity is standing at 105 gigawatt and out of that in the year 2021 we supplied more than 70 gigawatt across the globe and this is what very close to me because i specially look after the module segment 60 gigawatt is our module manufacturing capacity and out of that we have supplied more than 38.5 gigawatt and i can proudly tell that longi became the first ever company to exceed the supply of more than 30 gigawatt in a single calendar year so that is a kind of a achievement what we have done and particularly in india we have supplied close to 3.75 gigawatt last year and last consecutive two years longi has been the number one supplier in india as well along with the globe and thanks for you all for that and it was never possible without help of all you people as you can see we have our footprint in more than 85 countries and more than 5000 satisfied clients are working with longi if i want to take the names from india there are players like adani azure hero future tata mahindra sustain renew and many many a lot of there who must be sitting there in front of me and watching me so many small players who have been been contributing to us to come up as a number one supplier in india and why this trust came into our brand is because of three major factor one is our quality if you can see these are all the reports because in india what happens is uh, we are following one standard that is bis but if you see and analyze all these labs whether it's all quality matter renewable energy testing center pvel or energy yield test all these people are conducting more than 80 to 90 test on a single module and when people ask that like what is the difference between two modules because they almost look the same apart from some slight difference for the visibility so the major difference is if you ask them to go and test their module within these labs they will not stand anywhere whereas these tests are almost like 5 to 6 times stringent than bis and longi are each and every module has performed as a top performer and the highest achiever in all these testing agencies which gives you a confidence of our quality and it's not only the inside lab performance but it's all about the energy yield test uh, done by the pv magazine and the on ground performance of longi is also been at par throughout the peers now these are some efficiency records what longi has set with our r&d we consider ourselves as our own competitor and uh, it's no single technology that we are not working on whether it's hjt n type p type perk everything longi is working on and the recent highlight is we have broke our own world record of cell efficiency and that is standing at 26.3% at the cell level now talk about the bankability because when we discuss solar it's always starts with 25 year and nowadays 
विद बायफेशियल इट्स नाउ एक्सीडिंग टू थर्टी इयर्स एंड वी ऑल नो नो कंपनी कैन सर्वाइव इफ देअ बैंकेबिलिटी एंड देअर फिनेंशियल परफॉर्मेंस इज नॉट रनिंग अलॉन्ग विद देअर प्रोडक्ट सो विथ लॉन्गी यू आर रेस्ट अश्योर्ड फॉर नेक्स्ट थर्टी इयर्स ऑफ यूर मॉडल्स परफॉर्मेंस एंड द आर कंपनीज परफॉर्मेंस टू सपोर्ट यू इन दिस लॉन्गर रन so talking about the financial strength what we are having or the health of longi of finance so basically if you can see at the right hand side this is the ultimate the score of longi currently at 6.3 so why this is important because if any one of you going through the bnef report and what is the ultimate the score it defines the bankability of your module or this particular company or anything which is falling below 2 may not last for more than 2 to 3 years or may go insolvent so please not only the parameters from the data sheet but do check all this stuff before choosing your model partner we are definitely the 100% bankable and uh, uh, brand uh, through the bloom boomba nef and this is again one of the most important parameter that is this triple a rating that derives from the manufacturing facilities financial hands shipments capacity and technology so when they cumulatively compile all these parameters if you can see longi is the only company who is standing tall on that parameter since last many many quarters as the triple a rated now whatever details i have mentioned is definitely only possible because of the key element that is our product so in industry we are keeping it safe and simple we are having two generations of the product one is hymo 4 and another one is hymo 5 So Hymo 4 is basically a product which is ranging from 420, 20, 30 watt peak till 460 watt peak, and then Hymo 5 that comes in from 540 till 560 watt peak, and both these products are coming in mono and bifacial. So I would like to again repeat one more point because after this many people will be having a query in their mind: Why not beyond 560? Why you're not going ahead that? So I'll just want to clear one simple thing: What R&D we have been spending. M10 is the standard size what we people are considering. Reason being, exceeding the sizes beyond the limits of currently 2.6 meter in the overall area will give you a small advantage. But within the long run of the life of the project, the disadvantage of higher side module are much more. So unless and until there is an improvement in efficiency, will not be coming up with any higher side of the module. now uh, i discussed a lot about the product but yes the throughout uh, this ppt before that we have seen one video and what is our vision you guys have already seen in the uh, that particular video but i would like to share that yes being a part of solar for solar it we are committed not only to sell the modules in india or across the world but we are being or committed to the part of re ev and ep100 so under re100 we are made making sure that before 2028 all our operations of longi across the globe will be running on 100% renewable power and apart from that under ev100 we are going to install adequate power charging facilities across our all the facilities so that maximum for employee and family their family should use and opt the electric vehicles and more than that under ep100 under the energy management system we are going to reduce or increase rather increase our efficiency by more than 35% compared to our 2015 level in the ep100 so we are currently standing at 2022 with a lot of carbon and uh, footprints generating around the globe and we all want to we want to make sure along with your help by 2050 coming together we will make our green earth a carbon neutral earth so thank you so much this is it from my side these are my contact details so if you have any query related to the module if you want to understand anything from our end do get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help you thank you so much over to you sachin thank you so much for that knowledgeable presentation well as we all are aware the newly drafted super policy uh, 2022 for uttar pradesh proposes to achieve 16 gigawatt of project 2026 to 2027 under the policy 20 cities will be developed as solar cities covering 10 lakh people will explore the pointers in uttar pradesh market we have been joined today by an excellent panel allow me to introduce 
Mr. Sabhasaji Majumdar from ICRA as our moderator. Uh, Mr. Raman Bhatia from Servotech Power Systems. Mr. Syed Nakvi from Acme Group. Mr. Shantanu Sirsat from Growart. Mr. Arijit Mitra from Longi. Mr. Arshu Gupta from CleanMax. Mr. Alok Verma from Ampler Solar. Now, without any further delay, we'll be initiating our much awaited panel discussion on solar market uh, out of Uttar Pradesh with the esteemed panelists. Uh, a note to all our attendees kindly post your queries in the question and answer box, and the panelists will answer them once the discussion concludes. Requesting Mr. Majumdar to take over. over Thank to you me. very much, uh, Sakshi, and thanks for giving us this opportunity to be this opportunity for hosting this excellent panel. First of all, I would like to thank my uh, two fellow panelists who have made this excellent uh, presentation, which has set the context and the background and the importance you know the solar industry can have for humanity. So my first question is related you know to the market opportunities and the regulatory uh, you know updates on the utility segment. Uh, maybe I'd like to begin by asking this question to Mr. Burma. I mean since Amplus you know one of the very big groups which is involved in uh, decentralized as well as you know grid level projects. How do they see the you know uh, whole uh, you know market environment? And regulations in UP, how do they compare them with, you know, other states? I'm sure Amplus would have worked in several states. So how do you see the market and the regulations and the support from the regulator and the state government in implementing solar projects? Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, I think it's a very interesting question uh, in context of UP. So uh, just to give you a, a background, a brief background, we started our journey in Uttar Pradesh way back in 2018 when we did our first and uh, UP's first open access project. That was a 50 megawatt with an investment of around 300 crores. And recently we have commissioned another 56, 56 megawatt uh, project in the Eastern UP. And now we are also looking an opportunity to set up another project, the third project. Uh, with our experience, so it's been like a four years journey in UP and we uh, being a, like a, a first mover in the state. So we have gone through each and every process regulations and uh, procedure with regards to the open X, solar open access in Uttar Pradesh. So one thing is very clear uh, in terms of the policy that there is a the policy that government has been notified even the 2017 policy and the recent policy so there is a real intent for uh, to support the investors and uh, there is a real intent to maximize the solar capacity in uttar pradesh in all the verticals be it a rooftop open access and utility scale projects and the recent policy which has been notified that has assumed a target of 16 gigawatt in the next couple of years but one thing uh, we also realize and i think everybody would realize that 16 gigawatt of a uh, capacity and the target capacity cannot be achieved only by the utility scale bits it has to be the mix of rooftop open access uh, utility um, you know uh, the other uh, mode of solar installation so here when we talk about the investment private participation uh, we have been uh, working in the open access projects uh, large scale open access project and supplying to the uh, commercial and industrial establishment so when we talk about the uh, private participation and the open access project they are very much exposed to the regulations regulations as well as the interpretation by the implementing agency so still we see the regulations are good policy framework that has there is a robust policy framework it has offered a lot of essential benefits uh, incentives to the investor regulations are also more and more or less in line with the policy intent and there has been a support from the government and the regulator as well but the lack and the uh, the, the gap what we see here is in the uh, the uh, one is the capacity building and uh, the other is the uh, interpretation of the regulation itself so that is where i think the state needs to work a lot and if these things are very very smooth smooth line we understand we do understand it's like a, at the initial basis there is there are some teething problems but now in four years it should not be there still there is a requirement there is a big requirement of the capacity building as well as the uh, good, uh, the right interpretation of the regulations 
Okay. So that's how, yeah. So that's how that's uh, the state uh, policy and uh, regulatory framework has been evolved so far. And a uh, couple of things, if they can be improved, uh, as an investor, uh, we will be very much happy to make a uh, you know more investment in the UP. The market is good. It's a, uh, there is a target to do our work, achieve one trillion economy, and uh, there are five avenues under which the state can achieve and the green industry or the green energy segment is one of them and so, the, the thrust on the solar and this carbon uh, neutrality i think uh, if that can be done the gap can be filled it is uh, very much lucrative for the investor private investors uh, that's very encouraging to hear uh, mr verma now i'd like to ask the same question to mr uh, ashok gupta from clean max you know, you're also in a very similar, uh, you know, have similar operations. So if you can share your perspective on what your experience has been with uh, UP, what have been the good things and what are the things that, you know, the state can improve upon to, you know, encourage investment in the solar segment. Uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh is very nice. Yeah. Um, related to uh, solar uh, decentralized initially but uh, obviously as all of us know it was a sudden shock sometime in early january 2020 when we saw that the diluted route of generation and and, and uh, for industrial commercials totally prohibited um, in a one single single order which led to uh, almost zero development of rooftops in the state of uh, Uttar Pradesh. Or else Uttar Pradesh was, I believe, going in the fastest speed of uh, developing rooftops before the open access started. Nevertheless, uh, uh, the government has now amended, uh, the commission now amended the regulation and some leverage has been given, some provisions have been given for CNI segment also to have uh, a solar rooftop. I will definitely agree with what Alok said. Um, about uh, the progressive uh, policy which come out in the state. In fact, I feel very happy that a uh, very less number of states, uh, they realize that uh, solar as an open access or renewable under open access uh, development is not only a subject of uh, the RPO compliance or uh, like other states, what they feel it's a uh, uh, business proposition what is given to uh, solar developers and they make money in the state. Uh, they have actually taken it in a much positive way that if uh, industrial uh, investment or in, in uh, any manufacturing setup has to come up there, it is now a mandatory requirement of the industry to have a sustainability compliance. Now, this sustainability compliance will only come if they are allowed to use renewable energy or green energy from any source. Now, by allowing renewable energy development in the state and uh, making a condition favorable for open access is directly linked to one effect side of the state. So that is what has continued. Sir, we are losing your... Uh network so that is all from my side as of now. okay thank you so that's a good hearing from you uh you know one of the questions in fact i will throw it open to all my panelists any one of you who uh, you know wants to throw some light on me can uh, uh, take this up uh, how do you see the green energy corridor in uh, bundelkhand i mean this is a very uh, interesting concept. They are going to build a transmission network and they want to facilitate uh, 4,000 megawatt of investments in uh, uh, Bundelkhand, which has the right conditions for development of solar energy there. So any of my esteemed panelists would want to share their perspective on how they look at this development and how you know it could result in a gr growth in the solar industry in UP. Uh, sure, I'd just like, like to give my thoughts, uh, present my thoughts on the uh, this new uh, corridor development in Bundelkhand. You know, the idea the uh, is very nice. Uh, it's good. And once if it is implemented in the right way and also in the timely way, in the timely, in time-bound manner, 
then it will make some sense. The problem with what we see in Bundelkhan as of now, it's there are the load is very limited. The substation there, they are very old substation. And if we want to do a capacity uh, establishment there, uh, want to uh, set up a new project there, it's a very limited uh, capacity is available with an ex, uh, which comes along with the a greater expense of uh, you know the strengthening of the entire transmission system. The good thing about the UP that they have recently changed their uh, capacity allocation, transmission capacity allocation. It is now open. But there is a huge, I mean, Bundilkhand obviously blessed with the ample land. Land is available and that land is also not a fertile land. It is like a, a barren land. And, and uh, that is the area where a lot of development can happen. And that area needs the development if we really want to improve the economy of the state. But the, 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 there is a lack of the consumption point there, which is causing a greater congestion in the grid. Uh, when we see this green corridor was initially was planned to come up, was to be completed by 2024. But uh, now they have extended uh, this completion timeline, I think by three years or they are yet to be yet to finalize. So while we talk about improving the, you know, uh, the energy access, not the energy, uh, the uh, increasing the capacity of uh, the solar installation, there is an immediate requirement to improve the transmission infrastructure and the evacuation. This tra transmission corridor was, we can say this is for, as a state, one of the ambitious program that a state can come up. But we are yet to receive or yet to witness the implementation on ground. The on ground implementation, yeah, that is what we expect as a developer. And once it is there, I think the uh, connectivity at a higher voltage level, which is above 132 or 220 kV, would be available. Even 400 kV, that is also envisaged in that corridor scheme. So uh, once it is there, the larger capacity can also come at a single place. Uh, we don't have to go for a 50 or in a multiple of 50 or 100 megawatt of a project. Uh, with the availability of land, there even a and uh, provided there is a transmission, uh, appropriate transmission system is available. Uh, we can, one can go up to like a 500 megawatt or to 600 megawatt of a solar installation at one place itself. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, my next question will be uh, uh, addressed to Mr. Nakvi from ACME Group. Uh, I understand, uh, you know, you are the head of PV technology. Is there anything specific that, you know, uh, companies like you can contribute? I mean, uh, obviously, you know, uh, solar technology in many ways is standard. But do you think there are certain innovations which can, you know, uh, benefit, uh, you know, relatively less developed parts of the world, including, you know, certain parts of India which are very backward? So what are the kind of initiatives and, you know, new technology which could be brought in, which could, you know, help in offtake of solar energy in these regions any specific you know customized solutions or products that you are likely to offer uh, mr nakvi on mute uh, mr nakvi on mute Sakshi, are able to hear? No, sir. Mr. Sayed, I think uh, you your mic is not uh, working. So maybe uh, till he's able to come in line, maybe I can flip this question to Mr. Bhatia. Mr. Bhatia uh, from Servotech. Good afternoon, sir. So would you like to share some, uh, you know, uh, some insights as to, you know, what are the kind of, uh, new products or solutions that you know players like you could offer to the UP market. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, on mute. First of all, I just want to share you Michael Ramon Bhatia, MD of Servotec Power Systems Limited. Servotec is an NSE listed company, and we are majorly in solar and EV charges. Right, right now. Uh, we have, we uh, are a company who have developed uh, us uh, 
solar system it was a portable solar system that we have developed in 2019 ये बेसिकली हम लोगों ने उन एरिया के लिए या उस तरीके की चीजों के लिए हमने डेवलप किया जहां पर सोलर की इंस्टॉलेशन बहुत इजी नहीं है लाइक like हम बॉर्डर सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस के लिए बात करें या ऐसे एरियाज के लिए बात करें जहां पर हमारे पास फिक्स्ड रूफ या फिक्स एरिया नहीं है या हमारे पास गार्डन है या कुछ ऐसी जगह है वी हैव डेवलप दिस प्रोजेक्ट दिस प्रोडक्ट विद द हेल्प ऑफ जी आई जेड इट इज अर्मन एंटरप्राइज एंड इसको हमने स्टार्ट किया एंड इट वाज इनोग्रेटेड बाय द चांसलर ऑफ एंजेला मर्कल ऑन द्वारका मेट्रो स्टेशन इन दिल्ली ये तो ऐसा प्रोडक्ट था जिस प्रोडक्ट को हमने स्टार्ट किया नाउ इट हैज बीन इंस्टॉल्ड ऑन अक्षरधाम मंदिर मेनी क्वारंटाइन सेंटर इट वाज यूज्ड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू इंस्टॉल इट ऑन योर अयोध्या मंदिर तो ये एक अलग तरीके का है बिल्कुल वैसे ही बात कर सकते हैं जैसा कि आज लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी बात हो रही है आपका फ्लोटिंग प्लांट्स की बात जैसे हो रही है क्योंकि तो आज बहुत सारी ऐसी ऐसे एरियाज हैं जहां पर हम लोगों के पास बहुत सारी जमीनें स्पेयर नही है करने के लिए रिवर्स कनाल्स वी कैन यूज इट और इस पर काफी सारा काम यूपी में देख रहा हूँ कि हो रहा है एंड इफ टॉक तो अभी हम लोग सिर्फ चार मेगावाट के आसपास के प्रोजेक्ट वी आर ऑलरेडी वर्किंग विद डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ एजेंसीज इन यूपी हेल्प ऑफ यूपी नेडा और हम लोग यहाँ पर सोलर पावर इंटरनेशनल के साथ इट इज अलर की एक छोटी सी एनजीओ है जिस मिलके हम लोग एस पी आई में काम कर रहे हैं हम इंस्टीट्यूशनल कर रहे हैं उन लोगों को जो इससे पैसा जनरेट करते हैं दैट मीन जो सोलर पावर जनरेट करके या तो फैक्ट्रियां चला रहे हैं या अपनी दुकानें चला रहे हैं या कुछ इस तरीके का काम कर रहे हैं तो हम उनके साथ लेके हमने इनिशिएटिव लिया है और में हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं और मुझे लगता है कि बहुत सारी अपॉर्चुनिटीज और भी बाकी है ऐसे भी एक और है जिसको हम कह सकते हैं सोलर चरखा ये भी बहुत इनोवेटिव काम हो रहा है के अंदर सो कैन यू शेड सम लाइट अबाउट द सोलर चरखा दिस इज वॉट फॉर फॉर द स्पिनिंग सेक्टर यस 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 करेक्ट 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 तो सोलर चरखा पे काफी काम आ, किया जा रहा है आ, और इसको यूपी गवर्नमेंट भी काफी प्रमोट कर रही है विद द हेल्प ऑफ खादी ग्रामोद्योग निगम दैट इज के वी आई आई थिंक इंग्लिश में इसका जो शॉर्ट फॉर्म है दैट इज के वी आई दे आर वर्किंग ऑन दैट और इसमें काफी सारी स्कीम इन लोगों ने निकाली है जिसमें काफी सब्सिडीज है और इस प्रोजेक्ट पे हम भी काफी काम कर रहे हैं इसमें छोटा सा पिछहत्तर वाट का एक पैनल लगा हुआ है और दो छोटे छोटे चरखे हैं एक मोटर है स्पिंडल है जिसके साथ एक बैटरी बैकअप है ताकि अगर जब रात में भी अगर कोई काम करना चाहता है तो उसको चार पांच घंटे का बैकअप मिलता है इट इज वेरी इनोवेटिव प्रोजेक्ट प्रोडक्ट एंड प्रोजेक्ट एंड वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू समथिंग बिग विद दो इंस्टीट्यूशन Thanks. It is very encouraging to hear that. So I'll ask the same question uh, to Mr. Mitra also. That uh, you know, uh, as part of your organization, what are the things that you know, uh, you know, specialize? Okay, but uh, Mr. Nakvi, are you able to? Uh, are you connected now? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Mr. No. Mr. So, Mr. Nakvi, I'll go back to you. You know, I repeat my question. Basically, uh, as you know, someone from Akshma, as you are, uh, you know, part of the technology team. what are the you know products and offerings that you have which could be relevant for you know relatively less developed states like uh, up so thanks a lot mr majumdar and apologies for you know a glitch in the in the internet i have lost the connection for for a while there so up is is uh, you know a, a unique state right so we have some experience operating there so we have our plant uh, in mahoba near jhansi of about 30 megawatts so we've been operating that plant for about uh, now about 6 7 years and uh, what we can say is that it's, uh, in terms of administration is one of the best sites right so we have received the receivables are always on time right not like the other states contrary to the impressions that people would have right in that state in terms of technology and uh, you know the challenges that we face in up so for developing solar in up the problem with utility scale is is a is uh, you know getting uh, you know uh, acquiring land because it's a very dense densely populated state 
so it's always a challenge to acquire you know land uh, which is arid and can be utilized with good insulation for solar the second is as uh, our colleague pointed out in the earlier discussions that the infrastructure is lacking right especially evacuation substations these are not and the tariffs at which we are looking at these days right they, these don't you know uh, materialize if you have uh, you know off take at about 33 kv or 66 kv so up needs to uh, you know develop in terms of the grid infrastructure right to cater to development of solar but what we can do is that for sure there is a huge potential for development of localized or distributed systems for that uh, apart from the solar right uh, we need to look at energy solutions right develop localized grids which can provide these uh, you know power solutions to prevent the problem of infrastructure infrastructure development uh, would take some time there has been a lot of announcements but work on ground has been a little slow but to circumvent that we have a huge potential in terms of the uh, you know rooftop and uh, as per the government's uh, announcements as well there is a huge uh, you know uh, target that has to be met apart from the scale also from the rooftop so we need to there are solutions present which can cater to that so for example acme is working on solutions like you know green hydrogen and green ammonia that, that could be utilized with micro turbines for providing round the clock powers green power to localize small grids so that could be one of the solutions or they could be <clears throat> you know battery storage or some other forms of you know hydro storage pump storage so in that uh, capacity we need to look at localized solutions till the time the infrastructure comes to pace okay so uh, thanks mr nagvi for your perspective so mr mitra you would like to add something i mean as uh, you know as part of uh, longi what are the things you could offer to the market uh, thank you mr majumdar and thank you solar quarter for inviting me in this uh, platform uh, Uh, particularly because we are a model manufacturer and we always see uh, any region in a larger perspective um, rather than talking just about uttar pradesh i would try to emphasize that our products are you know built and they are uh, developed because, uh, in keeping in mind various kind of uh, uh, geographical locations indo gangetic belt is one area where the temperatures can go really high and we are talking about the corridor in uh, bundelkhand where the temperature can go really high so we need a, a product which can uh, handle indian heat conditions very well and keeping that in mind we have actually restricted ourselves to go beyond a certain model size uh, which will essentially increase the current carrying i believe are some of the product which are available in market which are larger in power rating size although uh, their efficiency is not high but their power ratings are higher uh, but their current carrying uh, is also high so uh, especially for indo gangetic belt and the lower side of up the, uh, the the temperature can go really high their uh, module should not produce Uh, current beyond a certain limit where inverters will also have to carry some uh, kind of current and the heat dissipation will be really low so uh, because of this we have restricted ourselves up to 182 mm wafer uh, modules and we have not increased our module size after a certain limit and this is the exactly the reason uh, why we are going with sudden technology and india is one of our you know focus area keeping in uh, mind the india's geographical and temperature situation we are uh, developing our product along with that i think up uh, in, in certain area the the wind pressure is also high and uh, keeping in mind we are also you know uh, restricting ourselves to produce any module which is wider in size and that is again another reason why we are not going towards higher size modules and 182 mm wafer which i think uh, uh, many other manufacturers quality manufacturer they have also accepted this that 182 mm 
size wafer is the limiting factor. We cannot go beyond that. Keeping these two things, I think we are developing. Along with that, uh, I believe uh, in in uh, 2022 and and also in 2023, what change we are seeing in developers' mind that. Uh, because the delta between monofacial and bifacial has reduced drastically and a lot of developers they are going for bifacials now for utility scale project i think bifacial is a preferred choice right now uh, the bifaciality of our modules are extremely well and uh, along with that the the bifacial gains uh, in in terms of generation and in terms of the capex that you extra uh, spend on bifacial modules i think that it's uh, much more than what you spend so keeping in mind, I think by facial module, uh, Longi being a company who have already supplied over 10 gigawatt of by facial modules across globe. And in 2023, I'm sure our delivery will be uh, much more than our, our uh, monofacial modules. Uh, by, for UP, I think by facial module will be something essential. Uh, uh, coming in the future development, the Longi always keeps on innovating and we are you know, in twist, uh, trying to find a new technology which will be suitable for every uh, region and also it will be sustainable. We are looking for a product which has a better heat handling capacity and the capability is much better and also uh, a suitable uh, parameters which will also ensure the other components like inverters, cables, they can also uh, perform equally well. So, uh, not specifically for UP, but uh, I, I this my my comment will be for complete Indo-Gangetic belt and also for Rajasthan. Um, these are the products that we are right now working on, and also uh, I'm sure uh, uh, some of my fellow uh, panelists who have used our modules can testify that when they use Longi modules, the iterations and the performance of the modules are way much better than our, our nearest competitors. Uh, so that we are very, very fortunate to get this kind of uh, feedback from our esteemed uh, customers. And uh, I believe we'll be uh, keeping on innovating in, in these fronts. And uh, Indian geographical and geothermal conditions are also uh, a, a key uh, lookout that we are keeping in mind while developing the product. Thank you very much. Uh, would a colleague from uh, Growwatt also like to share his perspective? Mr. Scheller, you were there? Okay, then I'll uh, take my next question. Basically, it was about the grid, uh, you know, scale projects. Uh, so maybe Mr. Verma, uh, uh, for the utility scale projects, what do you see are the prospects for UP and what do you see are the main challenges? Yeah, so even for utility scale project, the challenges, okay, so challenges remain same. It's the land and the evacuation infrastructure. Uh, like uh, Mr. Nakvi also mentioned that uh, land and evacuation so the irony is where the radiation is the maximum which is bandel where there we have land but the evacuation this is proper evacuation is not available if we move to the eastern part of the up the land ownership is very very fragmented and very delicate very distributed so there evacuation is available but the land is not uh, available so it's like a but becomes a you know uh, chaotic situation for the uh, developer and in terms of a utility, see, right now the state grid, okay, what I understand, see, the state, the overall grid of the UP is around 23,000 uh, megawatt. That is the overall capacity of the state grid. Now, uh, there's, uh, and, uh, there's already uh, a thought which is processing uh, across the, all the, uh, you know, stake, uh, the government stakeholder that solar being a, a daytime power. So it creates a surplus of energy, which we do not require, and our grid uh, cannot be uh, properly managed. Uh, so that is one thought of the, you know, uh, the government, uh, the distribution company or the UPP sale, that is what they are stuck. But still, there, uh, uh, we think that 
looking at the economic growth, the, uh, the more industrialization coming up, uh, there will be the need of power. And uh, uh, UP, through utility scale bids, what I see, the one way to encourage and to come up with, a, you know, uh, can be is the development of the solar park where land and evacuation can be provided by the government, UP NADA, uh, the nodal agency, or through some other agencies like a Bundelkhan Urja Solar Nigam Limited or some other joint venture. And there, a uh, developer can give in a plug and play option. So, there uh, it will be very easy to take off for uh, these utility scale projects. The other thing, what we, the, as an industry, what we have an apprehension about UP is that. And because of the low, lower generation, tariff always goes up whenever somebody codes, even in the reverse option. So there has to be the acceptability of that tariff among the off-takers, which is a UPP sale, and the tariff needs to also be you know, approved by the UPRC and all. So that is one uh, apprehension which industry is always having. And we can't do anything about it. Technology is the same. A land is a challenge. Evacuation is a challenge. And of course, uh, that's all. The, that is all. Are the reason that tariff and there are the, there is a lower generation. So there are a lot of things to be done in UP amongst the target. I think there is only even in the last policy that set up a target of two hundred and twenty four hundred. Some number was set, and as of now, as of now, we stand at like ten percent of that capacity in overall UP. So a lot of things needs to be done. Uh, in terms of payment and everything, more of thing, more or less, UP is a more disciplined state uh, when it comes to the payment to the utility projects. So, working capital is not a challenge; is not a matter of concern for the developer. It's just that uh, the evacuation, the infrastructure requirement, if the government can offer a support, a uh, lot of things can be done in the UP solar sector, UP utility scale projects. Uh, Mr. Gupta, would you want to share a perspective on, uh, you know, uh, what are the challenges and opportunities for utility scale projects in UP? So I will uh, <clears throat> speak more on the opportunity which is there because uh, the limitation of it is self-known that uh, infrastructure at times and land availability is an issue. But uh, if you see the opportunity, the merits in... Uh, uh, the policy of Uttar Pradesh, it allows you to do interstate trans transaction of power under open access even uh, from the state uh, using the STU grid rather than going to CTU. Now, many of the developers, I don't know if they are not aware or they don't have, they have not uh, considered this fact that for ISTS, everybody uh, tends to move towards uh, uh, obviously, CTU and they prefer going to Rajasthan and states like Gujarat. However, if you see the policy of uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh, even if you are connected to a state transmission utility and you want to do IESTS project, number one, you save a good amount of cost in terms of uh, evacuation approval, development of evacuation of a huge capacity which is required for a CTU project. You can develop a smaller project, send the power outside where that interstate where the state transmission charges are also waived off now that state transmission charges are one of the additional burden which normally a developer feels which is there uh, which is the reason why they don't want to push power in the stu and route it through the ctu but uttar pradesh policy provides an excellent opportunity where it can be done faster you know the stu grids are available you can have a plan and day one, you can start pushing power through STU in, in, in the IESTS market. So that is one of the biggest opportunities which should be definitely promoted by the state uh, uh, policy makers across the country and among the developers. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that was very encouraging to hear the fact that, you know, the state has uh, allowed, you know, uh, access on state uh, STU network as well. And I'm sure it will... Uh, you know, in the long run, help uh, utility scale projects could come up in UP. Obviously, things like, uh, you know, regulatory environment as well as, uh, you know, payment of the, uh, in case, of course, uh, you know, the players are seeking to tap the UP discounts, obviously, the payment discipline will have to be improved. So those things uh, are very well taken. 
so I am through with my question to the panel. I would like to take a few questions from the audience as well. So uh, would you like to okay. take it up? Uh, Sir, I'll just uh, screen the yeah. questions on screen and uh, uh, anybody can just uh, take up the questions. Yeah, hello. So I think it is from Mr. Sai Krishna. So basically, uh, uh, if you're talking about the uh, availability of the inverters for the residential segment, if uh, that is what is your question. Uh, because uh, if you see majorly when uh, Growat uh, entered into the Indian business, uh, its major focus at that time in 2012-13 was into uh, residential segment and uh, uh, looking at the uh, uh, right now going on the uh, rapid growth that is happening in that particular segment i think there should not be any uh, issues because most of our inverters we have already uh, you can say updated as per the latest requirement of the modules also so all the high current modules and the supply chain is in place so I think there should not be uh, any uh, issue, even though if the requirement is uh, growing rapidly for the inverters in coming future. Any other question from the audience? Uh... No, sir. Uh, that's all. Okay, then uh, I will just ask one common question, very quick. Uh, you know, from everyone. Uh, if you had one thing to wish from the UP government, what would that be? So I would begin with, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Sitsat, if you want to uh, have any, you know, uh, wish list. Uh, there is no specific uh, wish list, but uh, you know, basically, if I'm talking about. Uh, the rooftop uh, projects, then definitely subsidy plays a very important role. And uh, apart from that, for the residential, basically, and uh, if uh, there is a very uh, clear, uh, what you can say, a draft copy uh, for the solar program, then that would be beneficial. That would be helpful. Okay. Uh, Mr. Nakvi, one wish list from, from your side. So, Mr. Majundar, uh, I would say that uh, I would like to see more, you know, work on the ground, especially on the Bundelkhand you know, corridor and things like that, so that we can have, see more, you know, development in this period, more opportunities for us, for UTT players to uh, Mr. Uh, Mitra, any wish list from your side? I believe there are two uh, areas where uh, UP can, you know, uh, their put their effort. One is Bundelkhand, where I think uh, everyone is saying the same thing. The evacuation infrastructure is something that can be worked out immediately, and that will improve the the execute executability of the project. And second place is uh, the CNI segment. I think. A uh, little more push in CNI segment in terms of the execution and the speed of execution, especially the cold storage belt. I think that will help. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Verma, any uh, you know uh, wish wish list from your side? Uh, just one. There, uh, there has to be the sync in the policy and regulation and. Both of them should be followed in this spirit by the implementation agencies. That's all. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bhatia is around. Mr. Bhatia? Oh, he's uh, logged out. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Gupta, anything from your side? Yeah, so same uh, is my wish list also, which has been from every state. Like once a policy has been made with a lot of brainstorming and very clear thought why the policy has been made and if a regulation has also been framed accordingly. Uh, it has been obviously seen that uh, DISCOM takes it as a challenge later on and uh, then they start using regulatory side doors. So if a policy and regulation is framed and implemented 
let it be honored in letter and spirit. It should not be in letters and not in spirit. Uh, so fine, it was, I think, great hearing from all of you. Uh, uh, you know, I'm more or less through with my questions. But if any of you have anything that you'd like to share with the audience, please, uh, because we have about five minutes or so. So if any even of you have anything from your side to share, which you'd like to uh, share with the broader audience, please feel free to, you know. Uh, So I think since, uh, you know, we are more or less through, I would like to hand back the stage to Sakshi. Uh, but I would like to thank all my fellow panelists for taking out their valuable time to, part, to be part of this conference. Uh, and also the audience for being such an attentive audience. And finally, I'd like to thank the group for giving us this opportunity, me this opportunity for, uh, for being uh, part of this esteemed panel. So over to you, Sakshi, please. Thank you all the panelists and Mr. Majumdar for being such an excellent moderator at this webinar. Uh, you, uh, we really appreciate how you superbly moderated the session. We would also like to extend our gratitude to everyone for uh, investing their valuable time and support for the event. I hope the key takeaways from the session will be instrumental in paving the way for sustainability and development in Uttar Pradesh. We promise to be back with more exciting sessions. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.